Noah's been cramped up in a floating zoo for nearly a year. To find out how he got there and why Dinkleberry drowned the planet in the first place, check out Noah's Ark Part 1. Dinkleberry didn't think ahead when creating the planet, and after just a few short years, everything went south. For the next 40 days and nights, Dinkleberry drowned murders everything. Pandas? Check. Babies? Check. Trees? Double check! In fact, the change in water pressure, temperature, pH level, and salt content obliterated the underwater habitats as well, killing enough fish to put Long John Silvers out of business. Noah's boat was the only one that floated and held together, which is amazing considering the rickety old thing contained millions of tons of animals, food, and water. But besides the creatures on Noah's boat, did anything else survive the flood? <laughs> Noah stayed busy keeping the termites and woodpeckers away from the side of the boat and shoveling 9 million pounds of poo out the one window. He could have saved himself some headache if he'd just brought a few million dung beetles along to help out. Fortunately for everyone, Dingleberry didn't get a burnt offering fix that year. With all that methane on board, they would have all lit up like a giant fart. At 30,000 feet up, it was super freaking cold, which was great news for the penguins, but not so much for the meerkats and camels. Once the genocide bit was done, Dingleberry sent a strong wind to blow back the water. It lasted for 150 days, and while it somehow didn't cause a massive art-crushing storm, it was strong enough to push all the water over the edge of the earth. Did I mention that the world was flat back then? The boat floats around nicely for a while before lodging itself on a mountaintop. They chill up there for a few weeks, till Noah finally sends out a couple of bird scouts to look for land. One comes back with an olive branch because apparently olive trees had gills back then and could survive half a year underwater. With almost no view available from the one window, Noah takes off the roof of the boat to look around. And sure enough, the land is almost dry. Yeah, he literally takes off the roof. It says so in Genesis. All of the plants had been destroyed by now, except for olive trees, and the animals had to make it back to their natural habitats with nothing to eat but olives. Which would have been okay, but they'd all died from methane poisoning while on board the boat. There was almost no ventilation after all. So, Dingleberry had to recreate plants and animals anyways. Unfortunately, he ran out of mana by the time he got around to making the dinosaurs again. Dingleberry could finally start over with a clean slate. Well, not quite. Remember the Nephilim? Those human giant crossbreeds that were the reason that Dink destroyed the frickin' planet in the first place? Somehow they survived. We'll hear more about them in our Jericho video. But, being the prepared omniscient boy scout that he was, Dinkleberry knew that his reboot flood plan would fail, so he kept all the parasites, plagues, and diseases alive as backup sin punishments. Noah hangs out on the boat for a couple months longer before finally exiting the ark. He must have been having a really good time. It's not every day that you get to hang out with a bunch of dead animals on a boat. Emerging from his boat, he slaughters and burns some of the few remaining animals. Now Dink really digs the smell of his barbecue, and he leaves Noah a rainbow as a reminder of all the fun they had. This really helped spice the planet up a little, since it was drearily dull with all the gays gone. Dingleberry decides it's finally time to retract his curse on man, which was technically a curse on the ground, but not his curse on women, because he still hated their ever-living guts. Too bad Noah's wife didn't burn a goat. Dingleberry swears not to genocide by flood again, which may seem like a nice post-genocide promise, but he never said anything about fire! A bit ashamed of his killing spree, Dinkleberry decides to destroy the evidence, making this the only flood completely undetectable in the geological record. He carefully layered out the fossil record and created plate tectonics so that confused scientists would attribute fish fossils on mountaintops to previously submerged subducting plates, rather than a massive global flood. And with everybody dead, the Ark survivors had to have tons of incest to boost their numbers. But Dink magically diversified their gene pools, making this also undetectable in our genetic record. Except for with the cheetahs. He hated the cheetahs because they were incredibly gay. No, like, they actually are. They weren't even supposed to make it on the Ark, but they were too damn fast to keep out. Most of the other gay animals were wiped out completely, including the fabulous Oris Rex. Noah emerges to a soggy, barren wasteland covered in bodies. He plants a vineyard and gets utterly smashed. You probably would too if God drowned all your friends and left you alone on a mountaintop. His son Ham walks in on him while he's lying there drunk and naked, and he laughs at his penis. Even though Ham's one of only three fertile men left alive, Farglet had a bad case of chlamydia, Noah curses the crap out of him, wishing slavery on his own son. But it was righteous anger, which made it okay. When Noah finally sobers up, he's misplaced the Ark. 
He wonders if the whole thing was just a dream, but passes the story down through the generations just in case. And a millennium later, some unknown author wrote it down. So much for Dinkleberry's cover-up attempts. The story Noah told his grandkids was that he was a righteous man who got to spend the year suffocating, packed like a sardine in a tiny pitch black box with no fresh food, sex, or fresh air, surrounded by animal farts, feces, howling, squealing, growling, and wailing. He even told them about his horrific allergies. He got no exercise and the cramps were out of this world. But it was absolutely glorious because Dink drowned the ever living daylights out of his mother in law. Woohoo! At least, that was the biblical story of the Ark according to Noah. Here's what really happened. Dinkleberry got a bit drunk on Jesus' blood and decided to pull a prank on the old man down the street, Noah. Jesus and Dink told him a giant flood was coming and he had to build a massive boat to save the planet. They had no idea he actually would, but after he did they felt kinda bad. So they flooded the world just to play along with it and not hurt the poor old man's feelings. Whichever account is true, it worked out for Noah in the end, and if you worship Dinkleberry, everything will work out for you too. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, be sure to vote by clicking right here or writing in the comments below about which bible myth you'd like me to animate next. I'm trying to turn Holy Kool-Aid into my full time job, which would mean much more content created each month for you guys. If you'd like to support me, please go to patreon.com where you can donate on a per episode basis. There are some pretty sweet rewards there too for my patrons, and the more you contribute, the better the reward. Not only that, but after each donation milestone we hit, I'll create something extra special as a thank you. For example, once we hit $100 per video, I'm attending a super traditional church dressed in a devil's outfit handing out apples from my knowledge basket. I'll record the whole thing of course, and patrons get exclusive early access to it. Finally, I want to give a huge shout out to Aaron Ra, who just by mentioning my channel on Facebook caused my subscriber count to triple over a 24 hour period. Thank you, Aaron. So if you haven't checked out his channel, please click here and check it out now and show him some love. Thank you for the support and remember, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't forget to like and subscribe.